Right now, it's finally feeling like fall, but while temperatures are warmer this weekend, a big change is right around the corner. Dana Fulton is in tracking a possible Thanksgiving week snowstorm that could impact your travel plans. And after a big Badgers win, it's the Packers turn. We have game day predictions before the green and gold take the field for Sunday night football. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. It is 6.30 in the morning. I'm Christina Laurie with meteorologist Dana Fulton. You're not usually up this early I am at not. work. Yes, yes, that's very, very true. So uh, I've already had two cups of coffee. I think we'll, we'll be ready to go. And you already hit the gym. I already hit the gym. It was uh, actually surprisingly busy for that early on a Sunday. Yes, yes. A lot yes. of crazy people. A lot of people up and going. <laughs> I think it's because so many folks have plans today to take advantage of the really nice weather. Yesterday, of course, we had nice fall weather. And that's where things are going to sit for this afternoon again. Looking outside right now, starting to get a nice a little glow sunrise is just around the corner. Doppler track stays quiet throughout the morning. We're going to watch our temperatures climb as soon as we get the sun up. Right now, though, still holding on to about 34 in Madison. So a lot of deer hunters out this morning layered up. But thankfully, again, it's not too chilly outside. Over the next several hours, we climb up to the mid 40s. Another very average seasonable day with a light breeze from the southwest. Yes, we are tracking our next big system. It'll be moving in for Tuesday and Wednesday, heading into your Thanksgiving travel plans. And it does seem likely that the storm is going to impact most of the Midwest. There is a little bit of good news right now as we look at this track. It does seem to be trending for the north. I'll explain a little more, though, why that's a good thing for us in just a few minutes. <laughs> okay, we've already got kind of a taste of winter with so many. Is it so four? Four times? Four times. Four times. Over 15 inches of snowfall already. We should be closer to just a few inches of snowfall. So we are well above average at this point. <laughs> so at least the good news is if it comes Thanksgiving week, it's not brand new and it's not that first it's snow where everyone forgot how to thing. drive. Correct, correct. So hopefully <laughs> we've got that through our system at this point. Okay, we'll check back in with you mm -hmm. in a second, Dana. Thank you so much. Well, we begin with breaking news. Madison police are looking for a man who they say fired shots after he was involved in a physical fight on the 3000 block of East Washington overnight. According to officers, the man pulled out a handgun and fired towards another person at 10 o'clock last night. No one was hurt. Everyone involved in the fight left in their cars. The shooting suspect got into the passenger seat of a red sedan, according to officers who are now looking for that man who is between five foot eight and six foot one and was wearing a gray hoodie and light colored pants. Police say they have one shell casing as well as video evidence of what happened. Madison officers are also searching for a man they say robbed a home on El Dorado Lane overnight. They say that around seven o'clock Saturday, they received a call from a homeowner that someone had broken into their house. When officers got to the 4800 block of that street, they were told the suspect had jumped a fence and ran away. They say the man's face was covered and he was wearing a black hoodie and gray sweatpants. We now know the name of the man killed during a head on crash in Rock County Friday night. The 62 year old man is Fred Nafsker. Deputies found him pinned inside his car during a crash in the town of Avon. They say he was trying to pass another car and hit an SUV head on. The driver of the second car also suffered serious injuries. Right now, the Dane County Sheriff's Office is looking for an inmate who walked away from a work release facility this weekend. Rondino Fleming walked out of the Ferris Center, which is a minimum security facility on Rimrock Road. He was serving a 25 week sentence for battery, but is now considered AWOL. So he will also face a felony escape charge. Fleming was last seen wearing a black hooded sweatshirt and gray sweatpants. Time now is 633 and when the Packers and 49ers take the field tonight in Santa Clara, it'll be a matchup of the top two seeds in the NFC. The 49ers are three point favorites, which is typically considered the advantage for playing at home. The Packers are eight and two and have a half game lead on the Vikings in the NFC North. The Vikings are on their bye week this week. The Packers have had a great season under first year head coach Matt LaFleur. But the funny thing is he says they still might be able to play even better. I don't think we've we've gotten to a point where we've all three phases have, have really put it together for four quarters. I think there's been glimpses, you know, in, in each phase. But um, one area where we've done a, a really good job is is you know winning the turnover battle, and that's going to be huge again this week. Certainly, there's there's room for growth in in all three phases. 
from the Packers to the Badgers. ESPN College Game Day will be in Minneapolis next weekend as the Badgers try to get the ax back to Madison. But first, the team wrapped up things at Camp Randall for one final time this season, hosting a lackluster 4-5 and five Purdue squad for their home finale Saturday. The Badgers quickly got off to a 7-0 lead in the first, and later Jonathan Taylor scored 1-2. JT had 222 yards on top of that touchdown in what could be his last game here in Madison. Final score, Wisconsin 45, Purdue 24. The Badgers ended with 606 yards of total offense, 403 of them on the ground. Next up, not just a battle for the Axe, but also the Big Ten West at TCF Bank Stadium next Saturday in Minneapolis. We're heading into a busy travel week and more than 1 million Wisconsinites plan to hit the roads. AAA says that's a 3% increase from last year and Google Maps is out with a new tool this year that could help you avoid the worst of the traffic. The company took data from last holiday season and put it together in what's called their Mapping Thanksgiving project to give families the best and worst times to travel. Google says the best time to head to your Thanksgiving destination is early Wednesday morning, the busiest time as you might expect Wednesday afternoon between 3 and 4. Experts with AAA say travel times could be longer depending on where you're heading. Anywhere that you're going to be near the expressway is going to be more congested. Um, if you're heading down towards Illinois, you're probably going to run into more congestion, especially the closer you get to the Chicago area, or if you're heading up north towards the Twin Cities as well. Travel through those two cities is during the evening rush hour on Wednesday. Normal delays are expected to grow by almost two and a half times around that time. We have some startling numbers to share before you head to your kitchen to cook your turkey. More than three times as many home cooking fires happen on Thanksgiving Day compared to other days of the year. Unattended cooking is the leading cause of these fires. The National Fire Protection Association says cooking causes the most fires in the U.S. each year. They recommend staying in the kitchen while using your stove, staying in your home when cooking a turkey, and using a timer to make sure you stay on track. More local news now. A Madison Day Shelter is making sure everyone has a place to go this Thanksgiving. The Beacon is hosting lunch with help from several area businesses. Beef Butter Barbecue will be providing the turkey for the shelter, while Festival Foods is bringing pumpkin pies, and Clausen's is providing other baked goods. They're planning on serving more than 250 people at noon this Thursday. The Goodman Community Center donors and volunteers are helping more families than ever before put a Thanksgiving meal on their own tables. Volunteers are helping to pack Goodman's Thanksgiving drive baskets. They'll go out to almost 4,000 families, a record number since the drive started 31 years ago. If you'd like to help still, donations are being accepted through tomorrow. And for the second year in a row, the Kalahari Resort will have a float featured in the 93rd Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. According to a release by the resort, the display takes viewers on a journey to Africa, featuring colorful hippos, lions, elephants, and giraffes all around a watering hole. You can watch the annual parade Thanksgiving morning starting at 9 a.m. right here on News 3 Now. The holiday shopping season starts Friday, and if you're looking for the best place to go to get the best deals, you don't have to go very far. Wallet Hub surveyed nearly 8,000 deals from the country's biggest retailers to find out where you can get the best bang for your buck. The good news is a lot of those stores are in the Madison area. J.C. Penney saw some of the biggest savings with an average discount of 61%. Kohl's also ranks very high with an average savings of just over 57%. Other spots at Westtown Mall like New York and & Company and Dick's Sporting Goods also have an average discount of more than 50% off starting this week. Time now is 6.38. You might not want to wait until Thanksgiving or Black Friday to put your holiday decorations up. A big change is on the way, and it could be here just in time for your Turkey Day travel plans. Here's a live look outside this morning. Sun just coming up. Dana is checking everything we need to know heading into a holiday week right after this. Before
A lot of travel this week and right now Mother Nature really isn't cooperating for most of the northern Midwest. The storm system that's going to be coming through for Tuesday and Wednesday uh, it may be a little finicky right now. What we're keeping a close eye on is the exact path, path of that storm. Depending on which direction it goes, that's going to dictate exactly how much precipitation we see, how much of that is snow, and how much of that comes through as rain. Of course, the snow, storm will be coming through for Tuesday. It moves through pretty quickly. As far as your travel impacts, you'll definitely want to keep a close eye on the radar, especially if you're heading north. Now, if this system starts to trend a little further north, the center of it passing north of Madison, we're going to be talking about mostly rain for southern Wisconsin. Maybe a little mix, but a lot of that just rainfall. Areas north towards the Twin Cities, they'll be de dealing with snow. But if that path shifts just a little further south, then we're looking at a little more snow coverage stretching down towards Madison. So just a small shift in the center of that track, as you can see, brings more snowfall further south. Looking ahead through our, our timeline here, starts to pick up for Tuesday afternoon. We see the showers first towards La Crosse and the Twin Cities. They are definitely going to have a high impact travel day. If you're heading north along 94, plan on taking a, quite a bit of extra time for Tuesday afternoon, anything overnight, Tuesday or early Wednesday morning. They continue to see light snowfall. Still just looking at rain right now around Madison, but as that system tapers off later in the day Wednesday, it does seem likely that we could see a little bit of mixed precipitation. For your Thursday for Thanksgiving, the good news, everything stays pretty quiet outside. There are alert days in the forecast still for Tuesday and Wednesday because of the travel impacts. Of course, any precipitation on the roads, things start to back up just a little bit. Again, if you do have to head north at all, I would give yourself plenty of extra time or just warn whoever is cooking the turkey that they should probably give a little extra time getting everything ready. Today we are going to hit a high of 44, partly sunny sky and pretty mild outside. Another really nice day if you are trying to finish up any yard work. I know my neighbors and I were finishing up the leaves and getting all the hostas cleared out. It's about two months too late to do that, but we finally got it all done. Mid 40s for today and tomorrow. So we start the work week off. No case of the Monday blues. A lot of people getting their one work day in and then heading on out. Travel impacts for Tuesday and Wednesday with the system coming on through and then for Thanksgiving Day, we will stay dry outside. Should actually be a pretty decent Thanksgiving. If you want to kick the kids outside to play football a little bit, should be fine. Partly sunny skies, upper 30s. Slight chance for a little bit of a wintering mix developing at night. That slight chance lingers into Black Friday, though we aren't expecting any accumulation with that system. It's not going to be a major impact at all. Next weekend, we do have another system that's starting to knock on our door for Saturday and Sunday, but we're going to get through Tuesday and Wednesday before we start talking about those impacts and any precipitation totals for Saturday and Sunday. And at least Thursday morning clear for any turkey trotters. Exactly. A lot of folks will have to head out early in the day. You might want to bundle up a little bit, though. It'll be a little chilly outside early in the morning. Um, of course, if you're in a food coma later on, it'll be a good nap day, too. <laughs> Who won't be? Yes. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> well, winter is almost here in Madison. This is your reminder to download our Channel 3000 weather and traffic app. You'll be the first to know when weather that will affect your day is headed our way with the most up to date and accurate weather conditions. You can get it for free in your app store. Curbside leaf and yard waste pickup in Madison is likely done for 2019. City officials say homeowners should no longer put yard waste on their curbs for pickup. Instead, you're asked to drop yard waste off at a streets division drop off site. Officials can't guarantee another round of collection this year because of the likelihood of another winter weather event. But if weather does allow, crews will do another leaf and yard waste collection. And looking ahead, you still have time to send your holiday gifts so they get to where they need to be on time. If you're mailing gifts to an air or army post office, a fleet post office or a diplomatic post office, they need to go out by December 9th. The deadline is December 14th for retail ground and for greeting cards and packages under one pound. It's about a month away on December 20th. If you're really procrastinating, you have until December 21st to send gifts through priority mail and until December 23rd for priority mail express. And this holiday season, you can become one of Santa's elves as part of Operation Santa. You'll find everything you need right here on the USPS website. All over the country, kids will send letters to Santa asking for everything from toys to the basics, like a warm coat or shoes. And you can help make their Christmas wishes come true. Starting tomorrow, letters to Santa from low-income children are available for adoption online. You can pick a letter from any city in the country, and it's tax-deductible, too. Just a reminder, those deadlines we told you about, and... Get them out by December 20th. If you want to add your child to the list, beanelf.org has everything you need to know. 
A new arts and crafts fair in Madison is here for the very first time. This weekend is the Brew City Crafters Mad City Holiday Bazaar with more than 100 vendors. The Milwaukee-based organization began with a brother and sister duo continuing their family's art legacy. Now the organization is giving back to the community by donating half of all admission fees to a good cause. Donations from this weekend's bazaar will be given to the Old Timers Association important to not just be here for profit it's important to just always support the community and give back where we can we believe in the art community and the crafting communities and we want to keep it going it's just something we really really enjoy people can browse a variety of arts and crafts like woodworking jewelry and textiles the fair runs until four o'clock this afternoon over at the alliant energy center Time now, it's almost 648. One of the biggest musicals to ever come to Madison is here for another two weeks, and this morning, our Michael Bruno is taking us backstage. We're headed to the room where it happens, where the world turned upside down, and we are not throwing away our shot. Okay, have you had enough with the puns? News 3 Now this morning, we'll be back right after this. So we are looking at a really pleasant day today. That's the good news. So you can get outside, finish out any yard work before, of course, our next system starts to approach looking ahead to Tuesday and Wednesday. So for Sunday and Monday, partly sunny skies in the mid 40s. Alert days for Tuesday and Wednesday due to a system that's going to bring right now. It seems like rain for Madison and south, but wintry mix and snow for Madison on north. Thanksgiving should be nice and quiet, and then another system starts to approach and impact our weekend for Saturday and Sunday. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that next system once we get through those shower chances and snow chances for Tuesday and for Wednesday.
Thanks, Dana. A pair of Batman and Robin outfits described as the only known complete costumes worn on the 1960s TV show are going up for auction in Los Angeles. The costumes worn by actors Adam West and Burt Ward are complete with capes, masks, boots, gloves, and tights. The costumes are just two of more than 200 items of the 1960s pop culture being sold from the collection amassed by John Azarian over 30 years. The costumes are expected to fetch between $150,000 and $200,000 at the auction, which is scheduled for December 17th. America's favorite hip hop history musical is now showing here in Madison. Hamilton is nearly universally beloved and sells out everywhere it goes. Madison, no exception. Whether your family has tickets to the show or not, our Michael Bruno takes us all backstage. And just a note, the touring company did not supply any video of this cast. So the video you'll see is from the original Broadway cast. Let's check it out. We fought with him. Me, I died for him. Me, I trusted him. Me, I loved him. And me, I'm the damn fool that shot him. How do you keep this fresh? Every city is totally different. The energy is different. What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. The responses are different. The laughs are different. Every city has its own humor, which is, I mm -hmm. think is really interesting. You'll be back soon, you'll see. you remember you belong to me. It definitely keeps it fresh, jumping from city to city. Every, every city is like a new beginning in a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah. I think what keeps it fresh for me too is like this is a show where you cannot stop paying attention or you will hurt someone or yourself. <laughs> or you'll miss some little thing. So that really helps you like stay in the moment because you have to. <laughs> it's a moving train and you've got yeah. to do your part to keep it all on track. How incredible the choreography and the blocking and that turntable is just one of the most effective things I think I've ever seen in, in a show. Boom! Now, tell me about if there have been any snafus or things that have happened where you think, uh-oh. <laughs> and how do you like how do you make up? Because really the pace of this thing is like, you know, it's, the, the rapping, it's a lot of words you got to get out there. Now place your bets as to who that benefits. I mean, of course there's like flubbed lines sometimes. Yeah. Um, but as far as like turntable, nothing major. No. And we've we've rehearsed contingencies in case the turntable ever doesn't work or you know there have been times where it moves in the wrong place or but it's it's never really it's never a like big a huge deal. thing everybody kind of just rolls with it and and what about lyric lyric going up oh, all, all oh, the time that happens all the time yeah. there's so many <laughs> everybody just does what they can to get back on track right. and you just keep you don't even have time to think about your mistakes right. which is a huge lesson in life i think and this show has really taught me that like yeah you, you, you you're never going to find perfection in anything that you do. No. So, so this is a, a great lesson. You just you roll with the punches and you just Keep get going. back on track and you have no time to think about it and you just continue. Right. Because if you don't get back on track, you're gonna miss something. Yeah. Else. And then the next thing, <laughs> you know, it's 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 yeah. Uh, the other thing that's really wonderful about even the original ham is the diversity of the cast. It's just so refreshing, so wonderful to see. Click, boom. Coming to work. Um, I remember like when I first was in the building, I was like, wow, like I'm in a room with like a lot of other people that look like me or like, you know, maybe don't look like me. Or It was so, I don't even know what the word is. It's like profound. It, it's, it's, it's liberation. It's to yeah. be able to just be who you are. And, and, and for that to be yeah, enough. And just tell the story as a human being and not having to put on some kind of like accent or you know, to just be and be storytellers. Right. And you know, anybody could tell this story and that's just, that's the beauty right. of it. And right. it happens to be people that, that are not normally seen in these kinds of roles. Right. And that kids aren't used to seeing, you know, on stage. I never saw anybody that looked like me on stage no. unless it was like the king and I or, you know. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's inspiring for sure. Yeah. What's your name? Hamilton is now showing through December 8th. There are just a limited number of tickets left. You can get those at overture.org or by visiting the box office. Time now is 6.56 and there's a full hour of news ahead on News 3 Now this morning Sunday. Next, we're running through the morning's top stories. But first, here's a preview of what's to come on an all new For the Record. Good morning, I'm Neil Heinen. And today on For the Record, we're going to get an inside look into the state cabinet agency responsible for everything from licensing and regulating more than 200 professional credentials, 
Think barbers to social workers to nurses to ringside physicians to building inspections. It's the Department of Safety and Professional Services, and my guest is Acting Secretary Don Krim. And that's coming up this morning on News 3 Now. Shop. Right now it's flu season and travel season and now the CDC is out with a startling warning. Why they say the antibiotics you've been prescribed in the past won't treat new strains making the rounds. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning everyone, it's November 24th. I'm Christina Laurie. We'll get a check on weather with Dana in just a second, but first, here are three stories we've been following this morning. Madison police are looking for a man who they say fired shots after he was involved in a physical fight on the 3000 block of East Washington overnight. According to police, the man pulled out a handgun and fired towards another person at 10 o'clock last night. No one was hurt. Everyone involved in the fight left in their cars. The shooting suspect got into the passenger seat of a red sedan, according to officers who are now looking for that man, who they say is between five foot eight and six foot one and was wearing a gray hoodie and light colored pants. Police say they have one shell casing as well as video evidence of what happened. Madison officers are also searching for a man they say robbed a home on El Dorado Lane overnight. They say that around 7 o'clock Saturday, they received a call from a homeowner that someone had broken into their house. When officers got to the 4800 block of that street, they were told the suspect had jumped a fence and ran away. They say the man's face was covered and he was wearing a black hood and gray sweatpants. And we're heading into a holiday week and a local day shelter is making sure everyone has a place to go on Thanksgiving Day. The Beacon is hosting a free lunch with help from several area businesses. 
Beef Butter Barbecue will be providing the turkey for the shelter, while Festival Foods is bringing pumpkin pies, and Clausen's Bakery is providing other baked goods. They're planning on serving more than 250 people at noon this Thursday. Now let's toss it over to Dana Fulton for a look at our Thanksgiving week travel plans. Unfortunately, things aren't looking so great for Tuesday and Wednesday getting ahead into uh, your traveling for Thanksgiving Day. The good news though today looks wonderful outside. A live look outside with our WIC TV sky cam finally getting a little bit of color. Sunrise was just a little bit ago, so now our temperatures are going to start to climb. We have a partly sunny sky today and that's going to keep our Doppler track pretty quiet. We may see a little bit of drizzle stretching from the Dells towards Fond du Lac, so north and east of Madison later this afternoon, but likely not going to see that anywhere near Madison. Temperatures are close to freezing upper 20s towards Watertown and Juneau, but these temps are going to steadily climb now that we do have a little bit of sunlight. In fact, we'll be climbing close to average yet again into the mid 40s for afternoon highs. Any outdoor plans should be all good to go for today. Can't say the same for Tuesday and Wednesday as we are looking at our next system to march in there for the days before Thanksgiving, bringing a little bit of rain, maybe even some snowfall for the Madison area and certainly going to see high impacts for travel areas north and west of Dane County. That system will be slicing through again heading into Tuesday and Wednesday, but we'll take a little closer look at that track in just a few minutes. Christina. Thank you, Dana. It's flu season, the holiday travel season, and the CDC is out with a warning. The threat of antibiotic resistant infections is dramatically larger than previously thought. The CDC now says drug resistant infections kill more than 35,000 people a year. That's the equivalent of about one person every 15 minutes. New, new antibiotics are needed, but experts say not enough are being developed. Anna Werner discovered the unsettling reason why. He was just um, a teenager. Roxana Sudderth says her son Trey, a healthy high school freshman, loved sports. He would just want to be with his friends and get better at football and get better at basketball. But she says after playing basketball with his friends near their Jacksonville, Florida home in May, Trey developed a sore on his foot. And it just looked like a small blister. He also had pain in his legs. Doctors gave him antibiotics, but the next day, he said, Mom, I can't, this help, there hurts too much, I can't walk. She took him to the hospital, where they told her 15-year-old Trey had a life-threatening infection, MRSA, a bacterium resistant to antibiotics. He had blood clots all over his legs and in his lungs. Over 19 days, his condition deteriorated, until finally, doctors told his mother it was time to take Trey off life support. There was nothing they could do because the antibiotics weren't taking the MRSA away. MRSA was still there, and... And they said the antibiotics weren't working. Um, they said that nobody, nothing was, you know, there, there was, nothing was working. Trey's isn't the only case. We have seen infections that are resistant to all the antibiotics that we have available. Dr. Helen Boucher is Chief of Infectious Diseases at Tufts Medical Center in Boston. She says newer drugs are critical. How soon do you need new antibiotics? Well, we need them yesterday, and in the yes, good... Yesterday. Not, not now, but yesterday. Well, truly, we need more options for our patients yesterday or now. A big part of the problem? Many major pharmaceutical companies have gotten out of antibiotic development. Now it's mostly small companies like Pennsylvania's Paratech. Evan Lowe is CEO. There's only about 13 or 14 of us today that are actually working on antibiotics as small biotech companies. Paratech says its new antibiotic, Nuzira, treats pneumonia and skin infections with fewer toxic side effects. But it's been a tough sell at many hospitals, where budgets are tight and federal Medicare reimbursements for antibiotics are low. Payers and hospitals have said, you know, we have our generics, we need to control our costs. We'll just go ahead with the older antibiotics that we have here today. They're telling us that they don't want our innovation. In response to questions, the American Hospital Association told us its members are dedicated to the judicious and appropriate use of antibiotics. But Dr. Boucher says... We've been forced to go back and take some old drugs off the shelf that we would never use because of the toxicities associated with them. So you, in some cases, are using older drugs because you don't have a newer, better option? Absolutely. You're using older, more dangerous drugs? Yes. Paratech's president, Adam Woodrow, says fixing the system will take action from Congress. We'll have to see some form of legislation to enable uh, drug companies to survive 
in this environment. So in other words, you're looking at a situation where without help, the industry could go under? Without help, the industry could collapse. Something critical to families. I just wish I could see him one more time. Let him know how much I love him. I just want to see him. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a bipartisan proposal in Congress called the, Dream, the Disarm Act that would change the way Medicare reimburses for antibiotics to allow for higher payments to hospitals. CBS News spoke with one of those sponsors, Senator Casey, who says the goal is to stabilize the market so more medications are available. Much of Congress is back home this weekend for Thanksgiving break, and the question on everyone's mind is what comes next in the impeachment inquiry? The House Intelligence Committee will spend the week ahead writing a report on impeachment hearings for the Judiciary Committee. That committee will handle the drafting of articles of impeachment, which could include bribery, abuse of power, and obstruction of justice. As of now, there are no more public hearings scheduled, and an Intelligence Committee spokesperson has declined to comment on whether they'll there will be additional hearings added. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg could be released as early as this morning after a two-day stay in the hospital. Ginsburg was admitted to Baltimore's John Hopkins Hospital for chills and a fever on Friday. The 86-year-old was initially evaluated at a Washington, D.C. clinic. She was then transferred for further evaluation and treatment. Vice President Mike Pence and Second Lady Karen Pence are in Iraq right now making an unannounced visit to troops. The Pences visited two bases in that country Saturday. The Vice President thanked troops for their service and helped serve an early Thanksgiving lunch. Iraq's government is currently dealing with violent protests that have killed 300 people and injured 1,500. President Trump made a similar visit to Iraq around this time last year. And Americans will start seeing more political ads on TV this week. One from a man who isn't officially running yet. Potential 2020 rival Michael Bloomberg has reportedly spent $30 million on TV ads in one week alone. More than almost all of his potential Democratic rivals spent in a year combined. The New York Times says the 60-second ads will run starting tomorrow in 29 states. Bloomberg's chief advisor says the billionaire will not be accepting political donations if he runs for president and will not be taking a salary if he wins. Time now, 7.09. More people are getting ready to travel this Thanksgiving than any time in the past decade, including one million people here in Wisconsin. But more snow is on the way. Here's a live look outside this morning. Dana is tracking how that snow could impact your drive to Thanksgiving dinner. We'll be right back.
The sun is up, so our temperatures are going to steadily climb today. It really should be another nice, mild fall day. We're keeping a close eye on our next chance for some snow and rain to come through, though. Of course, for Tuesday and Wednesday, heading into Thanksgiving, there is a storm system marching through the Midwest or will be marching through the Midwest. That is going to bring quite a bit of rain and snow for, for most of the area. The exact path of the storm, she's still ironing that down. Whether it travels a little further north or south, that is going to dictate the type of precipitation we get and those snowfall totals. Again, that storm is going to start to pick up on Tuesday, though it moves through very, very quickly and is going to impact travel. Here's a quicker look at what I mean by the, the path of the storm. The center of this low pressure travels further north, so the center passes over Madison. We're likely going to see just rain from much of southern Wisconsin. But if that trap just shifts a little bit south, we see a lot more snow drifting into southern Wisconsin and even into Madison. Areas towards La Crosse and the Twin Cities either way still going to have quite an impactful uh, Thanksgiving travel. Looking at our future track, those shower chances seem likely now for southern Wisconsin with the snow likely to the north and west. Uh, anyone traveling along 94 for their Thanksgiving plans plan plenty of time. Uh, if you are traveling on north may see a little bit of mix as this tapers off for Wednesday afternoon and evening and then looking ahead to Thanksgiving Day should be partly sunny. Not too bad outside the alert days for Tuesday and Wednesday due to the travel impacts on the roads. Any precipitation makes traffic back up a little bit and of course the possibility for some significant snowfall to the north and west is going to slow things down quite a bit on Wednesday. Today looking at a high 44. No concern for any precipitation coming through this afternoon. It'll be partly sunny, pretty mild outside. Another nice fall day, almost a repeat performance of the forecast we had yesterday. Mid 40s for Monday also with partly sunny skies. So anyone trying to squeeze in their one last work day before the holiday. It should be a pretty nice day to do so. Tuesday and Wednesday, again, if you do have to hit the road either day, plan plenty of time on the roadways. For Thanksgiving, upper 30s for afternoon highs. Same goes for Friday with dry weather expected for Thanksgiving Day. So a nice day to, to kick the kids outside a little bit if you need to run off the, the pumpkin pie. For Friday, there will be a slight chance for some mix developing later in the day. And then we are talking about another system coming through for the following weekend, Saturday and Sunday. We a little bit of rain and snow chances coming through, but We'll get through Tuesday and Wednesday before we shift our attention to next weekend. That's a quick look at your forecast. And Data, you might have the best advice of all. You're just going to avoid all of this and head somewhere south. Head further south. Yes, <laughs> we're traveling down to South Carolina, so it is going to be much, much warmer and uh, taking a little break from the snowfall. You're part of the more than one million Wisconsinites traveling. Yes. Safe travels, Dana. <laughs> Come back inside. Travel back inside. Yes. Thanks, cool. Dana. Oh. Zero Waste Madison is teaching people how to eliminate gift wrapping waste this holiday season by using some alternative materials. People in the U.S. spend a total of $12.7 billion on gift wrap in 2017, according to a recent report from Sundale Research. Some of that gift wrap can't be recycled. Zero Waste Madison is now using fabric, yarn, twine, newspapers, pretty much anything crafty that can be found at home and turning it into gift wrap. Part of Zero Waste is not using um, materials that you kind of don't need and gift wrap is one of those. A lot of gift wraps uh, aren't even recyclable. Prefer using wrapping paper. Those extra scraps that don't fit can be crafted into decorations like bows. This time of year we start craving comfort foods and as we head into Thanksgiving week avoiding the dreaded holiday weight gain can be a challenge, but it is possible with just a little planning. Alyssa Nineman is back in studio this morning with cupcakes, pizza and more just made healthier.
Welcome back. As the temperatures drop, our body, bodies start to crave comfort food, which are often higher in calories and fat than what we've been eating during the summer months. But avoiding weight gain during the holidays is possible with a little planning. Alyssa Nineman from Madison's Profile Sanford joins us back at studio. Thank you yes. so much for waking up early. Yeah, thank you. And for, for bringing us. us food. Definitely. Everyone's face is always light up <laughs> when food is brought into the studio. Yes. And this morning, we even have some pie here. Heck yes. Yeah. So what do we have? Um, so we have pumpkin pie. Um, getting healthy this th this season is really just kind of thinking outside of the box, um, thinking about like what is my healthier option, what's a healthier version that's similar. So here we have pumpkin pie topped with a little bit of yogurt. Um, How do you make this good. kind of pumpkin pie? Uh, so this is actually just made out of one of our protein powder packets, kind of similar to what we have here. Um, so one of our pumpkin pie packets and then one of our pancake mixes. Uh, I actually made this one with applesauce today instead of eggs okay. and then baking powder, super easy. And that's an easy swap that anyone can do for any type of cooking, so the applesauce for the eggs. Yeah, yep, applesauce for eggs if you're vegan, um, or eggs for applesauce if you want a little more protein. Okay, and then yeah. we have a twist on the traditional chips and dip. Yes, yep, so everybody has those chips and dips platters, vegetable platters. Um, so here I actually made our maple pecan protein bites, again, just made out of our protein powder and a little bit of water, um, and some P3, which is powdered peanut butter. We have some of our chips here that are actually vegetables. They're made out of cauliflower and egg with Parmesan, and then vegetables with powdered peanut butter and um, yogurt. And I've been seeing this kind of as more of a trend, people swapping flour for protein powder. Is there a certain yes. type of ratio that you have to keep in mind? Or? Uh, Google is really good at telling you that. Okay. I don't always know the exact ratio. Um, and you can kind of, if you're good at baking, people are really good at finding their textures and how they want their, their stuff, so. You can just kind of play around with it too. And pancakes in particular are kind of hard to mess up. Yes, they really are. <laughs> <laughs> they are. And then perhaps the king of all comfort food is that bowl of chili that chili, we have here. Yes. And we also have the chips with that as well. So those are vegetable chips. Okay. Um, and this is just vegetarian chili with, with beans. Um, and it's super duper good. It's got 15 grams of protein in it, really low in carbs, really low in fat. Um, just a good like afternoon snack when everyone's wanting that, that pick me up to uh, to kind of comfort them after a long day of work. And while you're here, this is just the start of the holiday season. Yes. So people are gonna have that whole buffet spread. What sort of mindset should you have when you grab your plate and are heading down that line? Yeah, I always like to encourage caloric density. So think about the foods that are gonna fill you up most and then work towards the foods that are gonna fill you up least. Start with your vegetables, your fruits, move on to your, your low carb starches, your proteins, um, and then end with your, your healthy fats. And then when is it or isn't it okay to have that slice of pie or two? It's always gonna be okay in moderation if you know your time is coming. Um, so if, if you're wanting that pie, slice of pie, save up for it this week, maybe pull 100 calories every day and then that slice of pie isn't really gonna matter too much on that day. And before you go, your company, Profile Sanford, is out with some new protein packets that are geared towards moms. Yes, yeah. So we have a brand new line now that's geared towards moms, um, start to finish. So if you're considering conceiving, um, we have great shakes that are geared towards that for that prenatal vitamin, all through pregnancy, post in that breastfeeding phase too. Thank you so much. Yeah, and thank thanks you. thanks for bringing us food. Absolutely. Popular guest. <laughs> thanks. We hope you have a happy Thanksgiving you as well. You guys too. Well. And if you're craving the comfort foods Alyssa just told us all about, it turns out it's actually biology. A TV station in Atlanta asks a food scientist why that is. She says we undergo biological changes during winter, so when the temperatures drop, we search for foods naturally that are higher in sugar and fats. Studies show people gain an average of six pounds every winter. If you're hoping to take some of that comfort food with you when you travel this week, you might not be able to take some of it on your flight. The TSA says baked goods, stuffing mix, sweet potatoes and marshmallows are all good to go. But if your contribution to the family feast includes canned goods and jams, you'll want to put those in your checked luggage. Time now, 723. There's still a half hour of news ahead on News 3 Now this morning. Sunday next, we're running through the morning's top stories. Plus, we are sharing a call for action this weekend about a nightmare tenant situation that will have you checking your college kid's apartment lease. We'll be right back.
From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning and happy Sunday, everyone. It is November 24th. I'm Christina Laurie. We'll get a check on weather with Dana in just a second, but first, here are three stories we've been following all morning long. Madison police are looking for a man who they say fired shots after he was involved in a physical fight on the 3000 block of East Washington overnight. According to police, the man pulled out a handgun and fired towards another person around 10 o'clock. No one was hurt. Everyone involved in the fight left in their cars. The shooting suspect got into the passenger seat of a red sedan. According to officers who are now looking for that man, who they say is between 5 foot 8 and 6 foot 1 and was wearing a gray hoodie and light colored pants. Police say they have one shell casing as well as video evidence of what happened. Much of Congress is back home this weekend for Thanksgiving break, and the question on everyone's minds is what comes next in the impeachment inquiry? The House Intelligence Committee will spend the week ahead writing a report on impeachment hearings for the Judiciary Committee. That committee will then handle the drafting of the articles of impeachment, which could include bribery, abuse of power, and obstruction of justice. As of now, there are no more public hearings scheduled, and an Intelligence Committee spokesperson has declined to comment on whether there will be additional hearings added in the future. And looking ahead, you still have time to send your holiday gifts so they get to where they need to be on time, but you want to be mindful of these deadlines. If you're mailing gifts to an Air or Army post office, a fleet post office, or a diplomatic post office, those need to go out by December 9th. The deadline is December 14th for retail ground. For greeting cards and packages under one pound, it's December 20th. And if you're really procrastinating, you have until the 21st to send gifts through Priority Mail and until the 23rd of December for Priority Mail Express. But before all that, we have to get through Thanksgiving week. Dana, what's the weather looking like? Thankfully, we get to start off the week with some really decent weather. A lot of outdoor plans still getting wrapped up, decorations getting put up. Today is going to be a really nice day. Here's a live look outside right now. Sunrise was just about an hour ago and it's been a really pleasant start to the day. Now that the sun is up, our temperatures are steadily going to climb. Doppler track will stay quiet through the morning. We don't have anything mo new moving on in. Temperatures already hopping up just a little bit. 32 in Madison, about 28 in Janesville right now, and 31 in Lone Rock. So still cool outside, but this afternoon we climb up to the low 40s. And that's close to average, so it really should be a pleasant middle of the day with that partly sunny sky and a light breeze coming through. Once we get through today and tomorrow, we start to talk about our next weather system. And that'll be impacting the area Tuesday and Wednesday. It does seem likely that the system starts to pick up Tuesday afternoon and extends into Wednesday morning. May see a little bit of snow mixing in with some rain, but a lot of this seems like rain for southern Wisconsin areas. North and west, though, will be seeing high impacts for travel with the snow coming through. We'll take a closer look at the track of this system in just a few minutes. Christina. Thank you, Dana. Whether you're a renter or a landlord, there are plenty of horror stories when it comes to damage and who's responsible. Our call for action volunteers took a phone call that stopped them in their tracks. Leah Lynchide has some advice for the rest of us. Jake. Lisa Whiting is a dog lover. Casey is her dog. Good girl. And her daughter Miranda follows in her footsteps. Having that regular routine of feeding the dog and taking care of it was one of those small steps that can help her build longer skills. At 29 years old, Miranda still lives at home. She's autistic. And all of our life, I've always wanted something more for her than what the doctors predicted. Lisa recently purchased a duplex with the hope that someday Miranda and Casey could move in and live independently. This place was always supposed to be for her. In the meantime, Lisa rented out the property to Katrina and Jeff Gal, agreeing to allow them to keep three of their own furry friends as part of the lease. Everything was going fine, and then they turned out to be professional breeders um, and had 14 puppies in January of 2019, in addition to the adult dogs that were here. So there were 17 dogs in this house. Lisa says the gals were running their breeding company, Sunny Hurricane Siberians, out of her property. Immediately when I walked up, the smell was the first thing that hit me. The damage is unbelievable. Their dogs urinated and feces and have, has done damage to the tune of about $30,000 at this point. From soiled carpet to chewed up trim, a destroyed backyard and a smell that still lingers to this day, Lisa had a hard time hiring someone who would help clean up the place. We had people in here with respirators on and masks and full hazmat outfits um, just to be able to function and work in here. I have not personally seen a case like that. I mean, it's. You know, it sounds like extensive, extensive 
damage there. The Tenant Resource Center deals with hundreds of housing cases every week through its 24-hour hotline. A lot of it is misunderstanding of how to protect yourself, and the laws have changed so much. Whether you or a loved one is a landlord or tenant, there are some takeaways from this case. First, take the time to go through your lease. It really comes down to, you know, a broad understanding of what's in this legal document, understanding that it is a legal contract that, you know, you're responsible for. The Tenant Resource Center can help with this. They have housing counselors who can sit down with you and break down what all that legal jargon means. Second, get everything in writing. Document, 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 and not just in writing, but also pictures. You know, when folks move in, it's so, so important just to walk around. It's so easy now with cell phones to just take pictures of everything you see. Per state law, landlords have to provide you with a move-in checklist, and tenants have seven days to fill it out. Lots of folks skip this step, but it's the easiest way to document issues before you make a move. Then, as your lease comes to an end, request a walkthrough to go through any issues with the unit. I truly feel that this house has been devalued significantly. Lisa found the damage to be so extensive, she has decided to go to court. Her previous tenants declined to go on camera, but told us in an email their puppies don't legally count as dogs until they're five months old, so they didn't break their contract. They also accused Lisa of fabricating the damage and said her photos were not from their rental property. It's heartbreaking because I have worked so hard to make this a place so my daughter doesn't have to go to a group home, that she can have a life that's independent. In the meantime, Lisa is renting the place again, though this time she's only allowing cats while she works to recoup her losses. It's like I'm starting over. With this call for action, I'm Leah Lynchide for News 3 Now. Thank you, Leah. Whether you have questions as a tenant or a landlord like Lisa, the Tenant Resource Center might be able to help you. We have information on their housing, counseling, mediation services, eviction clinic, and more up on our website, channel3000.com. Well, in more local news now, a new arts and crafts fair is in Madison for the very first time this weekend. The Brew City Crafters Mad City Holiday Bazaar has more than 100 vendors. The Milwaukee-based organization started with a brother and sister team continuing their family's art legacy. Now the organization is giving back to our community by donating half of all admission fees to a very good cause. Donations from this weekend's bazaar will be given to the Alzheimer's Association. It's important to not just be here for profit, it's important to just always support the community and give back where we can. We believe in the art community and the crafting communities and we want to keep it going. It's just something we really, really enjoy. So this weekend, people can browse a variety of arts and crafts like woodworking, jewelry and textiles. The fair runs until 4 o'clock this afternoon over at the Alliant Energy Center. Before you set your family's Thanksgiving table, we're heading into the holiday week with some helpful advice. The new app that could help you dodge holiday week traffic, even avoid grocery store crowds too. News 3 Now this morning, Sunday, we'll be right back.
a little cool outside right now, but overall a really nice start to the day. Partly sunny skies expected today. Almost a repeat actually of what we had for yesterday afternoon as high temperatures will yet again climb up close to average. We'll be in the mid to low 40s for our afternoon highs. If you have any outdoor plans, it should be all good to go. Wherever you may be traveling today, especially if you're hitting the roads this morning, things do look okay. Here's the belt line right at Todd Drive. A few more cars on the roads, but thankfully, of course, no accidents to report and really no traffic along the belt line right now. Just a little bit of a delay there near Park Street. Otherwise, should be fairly smooth sailing. That's a quick look at traffic. Thanks, Dana. Things are looking good this morning, but we are headed into a very busy travel week. More than 1 million Wisconsinites plan to hit the roads. AAA says that's a 3% increase from last year, and Google Maps is out with a new tool that could help you avoid the worst of the traffic. Now, the company took data from last holiday season and put it together in what's called their Mapping Thanksgiving Project to give families the best and worst times to travel. Google says the best time to head to your Thanksgiving destination is early Wednesday morning. The busiest time, as you might expect, is Wednesday afternoon between 3 and 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Experts with AAA say travel times could be longer depending on where you're headed. Anywhere that you're going to be near the expressway is going to be more congested. Um, if you're heading down towards Illinois, you're probably going to run into more congestion, especially the closer you get to the Chicago area, or if you're heading up north towards the Twin Cities as well. According to AAA, the absolute worst time to travel through the Twin Cities in Chicago is during the evening rush hour Wednesday. Normal delays are expected to increase by almost two and a half times the usual amount. We have some startling numbers to share before you head to your kitchen to cook your turkey. More than three times as many home cooking fires happen on Thanksgiving Day compared to other days of the year. Unattended cooking is the top cause of these fires. The National Fire Protection Association says cooking causes the most fires in the U.S. every year. They recommend staying in your kitchen while using your stove, staying in your home when cooking a turkey, and using a timer to make sure you stay on track of everything. More local news now. A Madison Day Shelter is making sure everyone has a place to go this Thanksgiving. The Beacon is hosting lunch with help from several area businesses. Beef Butter Barbecue will be providing the turkey for the shelter, while Festival Foods is bringing the pumpkin pie, and Clawson Bakery is providing other baked goods. They're planning on serving more than 250 people starting at noon this Thursday. And the Goodman Community Center donors and volunteers are helping more families than ever before put a Thanksgiving meal on their own tables. Volunteers are helping pack Goodman's Thanksgiving drive baskets. Those will go out to almost 4,000 families, a record number since the drive started 31 years ago. If you'd still like to help, donations are being accepted through tomorrow. And for the second year in a row, the Kalahari Resort will have a float featured in the 93rd annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. According to a release by the resort, the display takes viewers on a journey to Africa, featuring colorful hippos, lions, elephants, and giraffes all around a watering hole. You can watch the annual parade Thanksgiving morning starting at 9 o'clock right here on News 3 Now. The holiday shopping season starts Friday, and if you're looking for the best place to get deals, you don't have to go very far. Wallet Hub surveyed nearly 8,000 different companies from the country's biggest retailers to find out where you can get the best bang for your buck. The good news, a lot of those stores are right here in the Madison area. J.C. Penney saw some of the biggest savings with an average discount of 61%. Kohl's also ranks very highly with an average savings of just over 57%. Other spots at West Town Mall like New York and & Company and Dick's Sporting Goods also have an average discount of more than 50%. All this talk about Thanksgiving has a lot of people getting ready to hit the roads, travel to the airport too. You're looking live over the Capitol this morning. Dana is back with your full holiday week forecast. That is next on News 3 Now this morning. But first, let's take a look at who is turning three today. Happy birthday, Brock, and all the other little kids turning three.
Though today and tomorrow look quite pleasant outside. Uh, we're keeping our eye on our next system that'll be moving in just before Thanksgiving. The path of the storm right now shifting around a little bit still. So we got to really nail down that path before we can nail down the type of precipitation that will be falling in Madison for Tuesday and Wednesday and the potential for what our actual snowfall totals will be. Regardless, this is going to be a high impact system for areas north and west of Dane County. The storm starts up uh, for Tuesday afternoon and evening moves through very quickly and the impacts for your travel for Tuesday and Wednesday again throughout the area uh, will be will be not so great. Higher though for areas to the north and west. If the track starts to shift a little further to the north, we're looking at rainfall and just rainfall for most of southern Wisconsin, but a small shift to the south, just a little bit of a track south, brings more snowfall into southern Wisconsin and a little bit of snow expected around Madison too. Regardless, areas around La Crosse and the Twin Cities, if you're traveling north on 94, will be seeing snowfall. So if you do have to hit the road late on Tuesday or for Wednesday morning, you'll want to give yourself plenty of extra time. This starts up late Tuesday and continues overnight. Most of the snowfall comes through overnight and early Wednesday morning. So this is a late Tuesday and early Wednesday morning impact uh, for the roadways. May see a little bit of a mix before this tapers off Wednesday night and by Thursday for Thanksgiving. Thankfully, uh, we're not looking at any storms coming through. No precipitation expected. Alert days in the forecast though for Tuesday and Wednesday because of the impact on the roads. Any little bit of rain, of course, starts to cause delays. So the potential to see some snowfall and some heavier snowfall at times come through around La Crosse and the Twin Cities. It's really going to back things up, not just on the roads, but also in the skies. If you have to head to Minneapolis for any flights today, we'll hit a high of 44. No threat for any rain or snow this afternoon. Partly sunny and really nice outside. Actually a mild day, very similar to yesterday. We stay in the mid 40s for Monday. Those alert days on Tuesday and Wednesday. That's when that first system is going to slide on through. Temperatures in the afternoon will be in the 30s, so it'll be a much cooler outside uh, for Tuesday, especially for Wednesday afternoon. And then for the end of the week, a little drier air moving on in. Slight chance for some mix to develop Thursday night, and that slight chance might continue into Friday, but otherwise upper 30s and an overall dry trend for the end of the week. Another system will be impacting the area for next weekend, but we're going to get through round one before we start to focus on round two for Saturday and Sunday. Okay, I want your honest answer here. I feel like this is the start of the time of the year when everyone is going to start asking you, is it going to snow on Thanksgiving and then it's going to turn into, will it snow on Christmas? On Christmas, is it going to snow in my wedding in March? And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, just a long list <laughs> of questions that pop up. So it's always likely in Madison that we will have a white Christmas, but the guarantee of actual snowfall on the ground, that is well too far off for anyone to make any promises. Okay, good to know. But mm -hmm. I know I've been guilty of it as well and I'll probably be back asking it's you. Fine. Maybe it's fine. Maybe next okay. week. Yes, okay. <laughs> Thank we'll, you, we'll, we'll, we'll recircle around. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, there's more news ahead all day long right here on News 3 Now. Then tomorrow morning, we're talking about food, how it can impact your mood, especially this time of year. But first, 60 years and still shining. It is the 60th anniversary of the Evergleam Aluminum Christmas Tree. We'll show you how the State Historical Society is honoring this Manitowoc made holiday icon right after this.
Welcome back. 60 years ago, Manitowoc, Wisconsin was busier than Santa's Toyland. The first ever Gleam aluminum Christmas tree was introduced back in 1959. To mark that milestone, the Wisconsin Historical Museum is bringing back its popular ever gleaming exhibit. <laughs> Doug Griffin shares the story of a true Wisconsin icon, our Mark Kane and Susan Simon. So Doug, it all started here. It started with this tree. Uh, this tree, uh, this kind of tree from Modern Coatings out of Chicago, um, was spotted by a gentleman from Aluminum Specialty Company out of Manitowoc. They saw this tree, took a look at it, and said, I think we can do something with that. So they took the design, they took the patent, they bought it, and they developed this tree. This is one of the first trees from 1959, 60 years ago. Aluminum Specialty's first tree that the following year they branded as the Evergleam, which became the most popular aluminum tree in America. They sold millions of them. I was going to say, how popular were they? Millions upon millions. It was so popular, like Evergleam became two aluminum trees what Kleenex is to facial tissue. Wow. It became the shorthand for an aluminum Christmas tree. So it started with this tree, but then it branched out into different sizes and styles it and did. colors. As the years went by, it got more and more popular. They started adding different varieties. They added pinks and golds and greens. They added four foot trees, two foot trees, different branch styles, all kinds of things to just keep going with the popularity. What captured the imagination of people so about these? Well, they evoked a space age quality. It was really popular in that mid-century modern style. Um, they were clean. They were also marketed as the, um, a safety tree. You would light them with a color wheel, so there wasn't the chance of them catching on fire. Yeah. Um, and they were, they were something different. They weren't necessarily meant to be a replacement for a traditional Christmas tree. They were a different kind of holiday decoration, and they really appealed to people because of the shininess, the ease of packaging, the ease of assembly. Um, they just felt right for the time. In the and beginning, they came like this. Now, the, that's a big box. It was a very big box, this kind of clunky way of uh, packaging and storing these. Um, they only did this for the first year. The following year, they switched to a different um, method of packaging. These, um, the trees in the cardboard sleeves that when, would be stored in the box, these boxes were easy to get off the shelf at a hardware store, wherever someone was buying their Christmas decorations, uh, made it easy to store, and was part, part of the packaging became the uh, appeal of it as they were doing the green and red packaging, that nice style as well. When these came on the market, how much did they cost? Were they economical? Uh, $20, $25. Wow. Yeah. And now? Uh, now if you go on eBay or Craigslist, you can find them for $500, $1,000, $1,500, depending on the style and the rarity. They're very difficult to find, aren't they? They are, especially now, yes. In the last 15 years, the, the popularity has really taken off. And all different sizes. Yeah, we've got a two-foot tree over here. They came in silver, pink, green, um, we've got this uh, gold one. This is one of our more popular ones. These were meant to go on a tabletop. And different styles. The one right over here has a different branch and it's sort of a, a little bit of a different That's sheen. right. It's got this frosty finish which catches the light in a slightly different way. And this is the pom-pom. That, that's the pom-pom. We've <laughs> got another pom-pom over there. This is a spectacular tree. This is another one that was loaned to us for this exhibit. Um, this blue trip, blue tipped, blue frost tree. Um, just gorgeous. That's why we put it up front in the gallery. It really catches people's eyes as they're coming into the museum. Is it Evergleam? It's an Evergleam. This is an Evergleam, yes. How popular is this exhibit? This is a very popular exhibit. We've been bringing this one back over the last several years uh, because people come in, they expect to see it, they want to sit down in the replica living room and have their pictures taken, <laughs> yeah, they use them great. for... Uh, uh, they use them for Christmas have cards. an old-fashioned? Oh, of course, you know. <laughs> yeah. Help yourself to an old-fashioned. That's fantastic. <laughs> Hey, we were just talking. Have you been? I have, yes. So we okay. went last year and did our family Christmas photos there, and they let us bring in our dog, Penny, too. So it was super, super cute. Um, I definitely recommend checking it out if you can. It looks great. And we were just talking. I mean, I love Christmas, and I love every... All my decorations have been up, so... Oh, really? Already? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're just getting around to it. I've been trying to hold out, but the weather's been too nice. And the good yeah. news today, of course, if you're trying to get outside to finish up the decor, uh, you'll be all good to go. Temperatures will be in the mid-40s this afternoon, with partly sunny skies. We're keeping a close eye on that system for Tuesday and Wednesday, though. That might bring some rain and snowfall throughout Wisconsin. But at least it's going to be a little warmer for Thanksgiving compared yeah. to what it was before that. So everyone at home, have a great holiday week, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow morning.